There were 10 in the bed. Illustrated by Karen Young. Hi everyone, this is Miss Conti, and today we will be taking a virtual tour of the Australia Zoo. Now, in the book that we just read, there were 10 in the bed. The author gives us some descriptions of the animals that she illustrated in the book. So I'm going to read those aloud to you now as we look on the Australia Zoo's website and a few other zoos in Australia about what the animals are. The first one is the Echnida. In Australia, echnidas live in all sorts of different places, cold snowy mountains, wet rainforests, and even hot and very dry deserts. The echnida is also called a spiny anteater and uses its long, sticky tongue to lick out the ants and termites from their nests. If they are scared, echnidas will curl up into a tight ball of spikes or dig themselves into the ground. The next one is a wombat. Wombats live in burrows which have many entrances. Below the ground, these burrows divide and connect, having many different rooms. Wombats are nocturnal and they are herbivores, which means they feed only on parts of plants such as leaves and roots, and they don't eat meat. The next animal is a kangaroo. When baby kangaroos are born, they are blind and only the size of a bean. They crawl into their mother's pouch, and depending on what kind of kangaroo they are, they stay there from 90 to 270 days. Only the tree kangaroos can move their hind legs separately when they are walking along branches. The next animal is a koala. Koalas are found only in the Australian states of Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, and South Australia. They spend all their days in the branches, sleeping and eating the leaves of their favorite tree, the eucalypt. The next animal is a platypus. This particular platypus is from the Taronga Conservation Society in Australia. Strange looking platypuses swim with their front feet one at a time doing the dog paddle. They use their hind feet for steering and as brakes. As they swim, they hunt for food in the water using their sensitive beaks to pick up the small freshwater creatures they like to eat. The next animal is an emu. Emus can't fly, but they can run up to 48 kilometers an hour. 
They are big birds with long necks and broad, blunt beaks. They can be up to two meters tall, which makes them Australia's tallest bird. Their feathers hang loosely on their bodies to help them stay cool in the desert heat. Emus feed on berries, fruits, plants, and some insects. The next animal is the cockatoo. Cockatoos are part of the parrot family and they have a clever warning system. While the flock scratches about on the ground looking for seed, grain, roots, and nuts, lookouts are on guard in the trees. When danger approaches, the lookouts raise their crests and screech a warning so the flock can fly to safety. This next animal is called the numbat and this one is in the Perth Zoo. Numbats are small furry marsupials with long bushy tails. They have brown pointed faces with a black and white stripe leading from the nose to the ears. Numbats have long, sticky, fast moving tongues that lick up termites and other insects. They use the sharp claws on their forepaws for scratching into termite mounds. The next animal is the kookaburra. The kookaburra, these noisy birds have many other names such as Laughing Jack and Laughing Kingfisher. Their call sounds like laughter and is used to proclaim their territory. They live in families and the older brothers and sisters help to bring up the young birds. The last animal, also from the Perth Zoo, is called the frill-necked lizard. This is also called a frilled dragon. These wonderful lizards can grow up to 85 centimeters long. They get their name from the frill of skin around their necks. When they get upset or angry, they open their mouths wide and make their frills stand up like umbrellas. And that is all the animals that were shown in the book. Now, if you want to learn more about the Australia Zoo and about the animals that they help um, take care of, you can go to www.australiazoo.com.au. And on the website, they have a bunch of information about their animals and about other things that they do at the zoo. So thank you for joining me on my virtual tour and thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.